Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Taco Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's gonna be a match between Siki and Love UI. I think that's what that is. Here on Heartbreak Ridge, left side of the map, we have the Hungarian Zerg player. It is blue, it is Siki. And on the right side, the orange Terran player, Love UI. Couldn't find any information about this handle. But he's got about 260 APM here, and he had a long macro game with Siki. So, I kind of feel like it's somebody who is good at StarCraft. And if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. And uh, we'll have to see if how good he is in this TVZ. Haven't cast a game on Heartbreak Ridge for a while. Uh, so here we are. I kind of like this map. It leads to some very interesting games. Alright, man. So, Siki, again, is Hungarian. He's going to go ahead and drone scout, see what the Terran is up to here. No proxies, just, you know, Supply Depot coming up inside his own base, just minding his own business. No plans to kill the Zerg just yet. But he is a potential threat here for Siki, so he needs to be scouted. The information must flow if we're going to win this thing, says Siki. And I have to agree with him. Anyway, hit that like button. Hope you're enjoying the channel recently. If you're not, let me know. And we'll see what we can do about that. Walling off here with the barracks, the drone says, Hey, let me spit acid on you, Mr. SCV. And the SCV is very glad he has a protective suit. Because I kind of feel like that acid could eat through human flesh in seconds, man. An absolute just melting seconds, yo. Oh, that is CV. He's going to be saved by his buddies. I mean, going in there. Yeah, that's bad. Don't go in there. Careful, careful. He's getting repaired. Oh, but the heal up is here too. Look at him repairing while staring down the drone. Hey, man. I see you. I see you hovering about here with your coming back HP. You're at 13 HP. You're going to drop acid. <laughs> drop acid. Spit acid onto my friend instead, aren't ya? Well, two can play at that game. I'll zap you with my zappy zapper. Alright, anyway, so the barracks is done. The delay happened. Got ourselves a hatch first on the other side, recognizing it is a barracks play. But not a proxy or anything crazy like that, so hatch is going to be safe enough here on the two-player map. Spawning pool about 60% complete, and really there's not much that Love UI can do here to shut down Siki. One thing that Siki likes to do that I'm a big fan of are the drops. The drops, 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 man. So we'll see if he goes for them. This map is good for it, because you do have these walls that protect the main base, but it's very big. You can kind of sneak Overlords in, unload in this area, and then, brah, surprise, big attack into your production, into the mid-game. Either way, two bases, immediate lair. Like, did he skip speed? I think he skipped speed to go for that lair. That is a really fast lair. And yes, Love UI sees that and says, uh-huh. Well, in that case... This is, oh, the drone's checking to make sure there's nothing coming through this back door, which is very smart. Uh, not going for a third base either. So, creep colony coming up. Still no speed for his lings, man. He really, really... It's got to be Mutas. It's just got to be Mutas coming out. He's getting a sunken to defend, but rather than getting speedlings to defend... Look at who's floating his barracks, though. That's interesting. Absolutely no biological units coming out. Are we just straight mechin' this game? I kind of feel like maybe we're straight mecking this game. He doesn't have a marine that's out on the field I don't see, right? No, because it's orange. Okay, this is turning into an interesting game. I am more intrigued now than I was like four minutes ago, which is when this game started, so that's nice. All right, man. So that is an incredibly fast lair. You have enough money to go for a spire. This SCV is going to scout it, yo. You don't have speed for your lings, so you can't kill it. Unless it manages to back itself into a corner. Oh! Oh, never mind. We got it. Don't worry. It already taken several hits. I did not check the HP before making that statement. Spire comes up. So they're going to be fast mutas is what it's going to be. Dude, Love UI is just straight mecking instantly here against Siki. This is not something we've seen a lot of. If you're going to mech against a Zerg player, you transition into it after opening it up bio. Because you know what? It's hard. I mean, it's hard to deal with mutalisks if... Uh, you don't, you know, have any marines. 
That said, if there are Goliaths, which I have to assume we're gonna make, because otherwise I don't know how we do this at all. Engineering Bay, Engineering Bay coming up. So the timing is good for turrets at least. That's gonna be fine. Dude, I cannot believe he's not getting speed at all. It's almost like, I don't know. He's just, he has no interest in being aggressive at all. He doesn't have much, much interest in being able to defend against stuff that drops inside his base. He's not gonna chase vultures away all that much. If they come here, they're gonna be dealt with. But yeah, it's gonna be Goliath and Caron boosters at five and a half minutes. So this Love UI player is straight up mecking with his two bases against a three basing Zerg player who's opening Mutalists, three of them, six of them on the way with that one extractor opening as we've seen, as is tradition, and immediately turrets are getting started here. So we're gonna have Goliaths out. Karen Booster is not gonna be done for this first attack, but that's okay. The turrets are gonna help immensely with this. And sure, Goliaths only do half damage to Mutalisks, but they still do a good amount of damage. They still hit, man. That's still 10 damage per shot. And Mutas are not supremely tanky. So any damage Mutas take are bad for Mutalisks. And they're not super good at taking down Goliaths either. So Vulture is cruising on in, trying to see what is what. I don't know. This SCV at least is going to scout this third base and know that it's here. But yeah, we've got six Mutas just happily flapping across the map right now. Karen Booster might actually be done by the time this engagement happens. Especially if the Mutas turn around and don't decide to attack at all. And instead, for some reason, come back this way to kill this Vulture... Or more specifically, this SCV, which uh, that seems like a mistake, man. He he has no idea what's going on in here. He doesn't have any vision of this main base. He doesn't know it's a straight Mac opening. Where did we see this? We saw this. Okay, so Advocat versus Jadong is a very notable example of this, where it's just mass Goliath opening against Zerg, and uh, the Russian Advocat did extremely well for himself in that game, without spoiling it. If you haven't seen that. I mean, first of all, why haven't you seen all of my Advocat, all of my, uh, my Jadong replays, all of my Advocat replays? Because those are a thing. <laughs> no, no it's not. All my Jadong casts, man. Why wouldn't you? So here's the thing. Goliaths, you're like, well, they're really good at anti-air, but their ground attack is not good. Untrue. 12 damage per shot is a massive amount of damage, and they shoot pretty quickly, too. So the Mutas aren't going to have a good time with this. Lings are not going to have a good time with this. Hydras trade pretty well. Lurkers trade pretty well. Like a Ling Muta thing is not necessarily the answer to these dudes. Not that I've seen. Oh man. Two factory, two base, Goliath production. Alright man. I expected this to be a very standard TVZ. I expected the Marine opening. A bunch of medics push out to the middle. The Mutas trying to pick them off. But no. It is no Marines, no Medics, just Mass Mutalist versus Mass Goliath here. Cup, you know, picking off a couple SCVs, but look at the Mutas. They don't want anything to do with this Caron Boost. The Caron Boost is scary, man. Even, like, sneaking into this area a little bit, you're gonna catch it in the face. Caron Boost range is nuts. The reason it's nuts is because Mutalisks were unstoppable in original StarCraft. And as a result, one of the many things that was done by Blizzard to balance that was giving Goliath incredible range in an upgrade. And it's been very nice for Terrans ever since. And even... It's not doing splash damage. Irradiate, however, does. And Irradiate's being researched at the moment. Look at this! It's just even this many stacked Mutas, not even all that much damage against this Goliath. And he's getting repaired anyway. So the right thing Siki is doing here is taking a fourth base, really macroing hard at the moment, going for a Hydralisk Den, getting extra armor on his Mutalisks so the Goliaths do even less damage against them when they hit. And I'm liking it. I'm liking what both players are doing. Like this, I've seen this work, man. I've seen this do some really good things for Terrans. It's not meta. I don't think it ever any any point in StarCraft was at meta, but uh, this is the second or third or fourth time I've seen it against Zerg. And what was the other one? Idra. It was Idra versus somebody... I think in the latest Brood War Cheese compilation is what that one was. It was just a big old crazy Goliath push against... Uh, who was the Zerg? I don't remember who the Zerg was, but Idra did some good stuff with that too. So I've never seen it abjectly fail.
Yeah, plus one attack is done on these guys. I mean, I think he's waiting for these to irradiate with the science vessels. I mean, more turrets are not necessary here because of the sheer number of mutalisks that are out right now. That's 11 mutas with another group of eight coming in. I, I mean, jeez, 19 mutalisks, ladies and gentlemen. If my math is accurate, and it's not often accurate, but I think I nailed that one. Yeah, he's not trying to take a third base. Not really. Maybe this is what the third base would be, though. Kind of building it up. And then he'll float it over when the time comes. But siege mode coming in. We are just going straight Goliaths into a million siege tanks. And the hydras aren't going to be very good because the tank count is high. This is... It's 105 to 93 total supply. The Terran player is up. It's... It's feeling all right for both players. We're pretty even at the stage. The macro for both players has been very good. The science vessels are out. The irradiate is done. It's been done for some time. And I think this might be a bit of a push out to secure a third base. And then maybe we'll see about pushing. But see, the problem is there's been no pressure on Siki at all. And as a result, he's got to be extremely comfortable with, you know, four base... 45 drones any zerg player would be happy to have that rolling in 11 minutes and it's just a result of the ui not putting any pressure on at all so let's see what he does he's set up a bit of a pseudo wall here just against ling attacks because they are going to be annoying you know 13 damage per shot for these goliaths notwithstanding against those guys is he just pumping so it looks like he's done with mutas. It's going to be... And never mind, he's got two more mutas on the way. It's a lot of Hydralisks and a lot of Mutalisks. And still the Terran player is up, but not by a whole ton. And this is where the Zerg player starts to swing into a bigger advantage in overall supply. If he's going to win this game. The turret lines, though. He just he knows. He knows how many Mutalisks are out here, and they're just hanging out. Which, if you're sicky... I don't know, is poking in viable? There's a free SCV there if you're going to poke in. Yes, there's probably a couple free SCVs here. These ones are more protected, but these... Nope, now that they moved, they're not. So the Mutas... Good gravy, Miss Maybe. They're just... Oh, they irradiate... Oh, he irradiated a Mutalisk that was almost dead anyway. Oh, man, that was not a good split off at all. A lot of these Mutas are extremely injured. He went in there with, again... Wow! With 19, right? He went in there with 19 mutas, and he's leaving with 8. Alright, that did not go nearly as well for him as I thought it did. A lot of turrets died. I think more than a couple of Goliaths went out there too, but the irradiates were amazing. Notwithstanding the one that instantly left because it instantly killed said uh, mutalisk that it hit first. But a 5th base from Siki. You know, you can absorb these kind of losses. Maybe be okay. Third base landing for Love UI, and this is where it gets dangerous, right? This is where the Terran player on three bases and mecking with spider mines, with siege tanks with plus one attack, with a million Goliaths. If that shows up like right here, suddenly you're in trouble if you're sicky. Looks like he has little separate control groups of Hydras and Mutas that he's setting up down here by this base. Uh, Love UI is just absolutely 100% patiently building his mech army. See the Hydras. The Hydras add an extra element of ouch to this whole thing. Uh, siege tanks attacking from the low ground, though. Okay, so the Hydras are all dead, and by golly, the Mutas just got obliterated there. 145 to 100 total supply. Love UI is just, flaw I mean, not, maybe not flawlessly executing this, but he's getting some massive wins every time Siki tries to push in here and get something done, which bodes extremely poorly for him. Yeah, this is turning into a very, very interesting TVZ. I didn't expect these shenanigans at all. Plus two attack is done for the mech. Adrenal glands coming in. It's just so easy to pick off overlords with goliaths from the distance. And Love you, I says, I have 65 workers. I have three bases. I'm at 160 supply. Siki cannot be healthy after losing all of those Mutalisks and Hydralisks. What do we do? Let's go. We have a 162 to 111 total advantage in overall supply right now. This group needs... No. Nope. 
No. Pull back to the sunkens, I guess. But there are siege tanks, man. There are siege tanks joining this party. Siki's going Ultralisk, which... If you're dropping them, yes. If you're just running into siege tank fire, not so good. That's generally how this works. Fourth base coming up at the 12 o'clock, which is right next door to Siki's fourth, man. I mean, these guys are just going to be bosom buddies if this holds up. But the number of siege tanks present says no. Defensive Matrix up on that tank that was taking hits. I think it's going to be okay anyway. Dude, look how fast Sunken's died at plus two tanks. That was at 50% health. It's gone now. Dude, love UI. His APM is not through the roof, but he is very patiently and very slowly and very steadily destroying Siki right now in this match. We're only 15 minutes in, right? It's not over by any stretch. It looks like Siki wants to expand bottom right here as well, which he should be able to do. Muta's jumping in here and just getting crushed. Plus two Goliaths, man, with Charon boost. No joke. No jokes. Look at how fast these Ultralisks die. One Ultralisk wanders in here. It's dead. The Mutas are all dying. The Hydras trying to Dark Swarm their way to victory here. But there's enough Tank Splash? Oh, I don't know if there's enough Tank Splash. The Dark Swarm, again, the Great Equalizer as it always is. The tanks all get wiped out. A lot of Hydras die. 182 to 128 total supply. The Siege Tanks, more of them join the party. And that one's going to get picked off, but there are still three firing on this group. In the meanwhile, this whole base has been picked up. And yeah, splash damage still affecting the Hydras inside the Dark Swarm. Oh, the Defiler gets wiped out by Siege Tank Fire. It had already been plagued, so it was already injured. And that's it. I, I really think Siki might have just done everything he could to save this base. He's thrown up additional creeps. He does have a Nidus for additional reinforcements. Look at this vulture parade coming down the left side here too, throwing down spider mines. I mean, if there is defense, oh, there is nothing defending this third base at all. Unless, of course, you count these ultralisks and these lings and everything. So never mind, we're good. He held it. Everything's fine. Nothing is ruined. I think these tanks need to push. I know they're really worried about additional incoming attacks here, but these are zero upgrade ultralisks. Only with three armor, not as much as they possibly could have here. No additional upgrades coming in here for Siki either. Yeah, love UI pushing in. Once the Sunkens are already done, which I seem to think is a bit of a problem here. Yeah, but Ultra Ultra's attacking into a choke. <laughs> Look how fast Plague! Plague on the tanks. Catches three of the four. Defiler gets rocked in the meantime. This might just be a, just like a move with the Goliaths kind of a scenario here. Yeah, the Sunkens are going to be a problem. Yeah, these 2-2 two -two Hiders are going to be a problem. But enough of a problem? I don't know. Siege Tank's still able to get across this bridge a little bit and fire on these dudes. So that's a nice place. The Dark Swarm is still getting some really nice value for Siki here, but once again, an Ultralisk wanders in, finishes off all three of the plagued tanks, and is getting a fourth one here. Only credited for two kills? That's garbage. You deserve more than that, my friend. God, the Siege Tanks siege up and the Ultras are gone. Another Dark Swarm, but dead. Trying to attack into the south area over here. Just too many Siege Tanks. Not enough Ultras, not enough dropping at all. Bottom right base is done for Suki in the meantime. Every base on this map has been taken, except for the center one here at 19 minutes. I hear that consume for sure. So the Dark Swarm keeping stuff alive. And the Nidus Canal, just really, really important. Another Plague Ooh all over these Vultures. It is still able to snipe that Defiler. Ooh, friendly fire spider mine. Do some damage that way. Is this Again, this base is still undefended. If they just went left... They've all been plagued and can't really go anywhere at this point. And it's bad times, man. Dude, these are plus three tanks. Lings running into the spider mines? Yes. It's fine. It's a fine use of Zerglings. Absolutely. Trying to push to the six o'clock Zerg base with these tanks.
And the Ultra Ling Army seems to be enough to hold this thing. Is that meta... Blah, blah, blah. That was metabolic boost. That was speed for Lings that just finished up. For Siki at the 20-minute mark, which I think is hilarious. All right, man. Siki is getting this Terran off of his lawn right now. Doing a great job with it, too. Doesn't seem really interested in pushing the top left, which I think he could get away with. Yeah, but man, Love UI, just, he's a mecking player. He doesn't seem very fast. He's not really great at doing two things at once, which is probably why he opened mech and is just doing mech and that's it. Mech is kind of for slower players, man. It's really powerful. Defensive Matrix Siege Tank getting eaten through by this Ultralisk. Save me, friends. Save me from this Ultralisk. And they do. Ooh, spider mine has got a big time hit there on them Zerglings. But you know what? I kind of feel like Love UI is content to let the situation play out as it is. He's got four bases of income. Yes, it is six bases technically for Siki. But Mech is cost efficient enough that you should be able to pull this off. As long as you don't lose any bases. Which I understand is not a super easy thing to do. The Dark Swarms today and the Plagues from Siki have been very good. They've been excellent for the Hungarian Zerg. Yeah, but see, Ultralisks are dying. And they are so expensive. Spider Mines easily taking down Zerglings here too. More Ultras coming out of these eggs, man. These eggs, they keep hatching with just horrors. Just absolute horrors for the Terran player. Love UI holding on, man. He is holding on. He's not really super pushing in here right now. I think that spider mine got hit by a sunken, which is not something you say very often. Is that sunken killed that spider mine? Not super, super common. But yeah, 171 to 115 supply. Love UI just continues to macro extremely well back home and handle these little kind of small scale assaults on his sovereignty. I mean, yes. Siki is keeping his bases alive, which is a really good thing in the situation. He needs this income. He especially needs the gas if he's going to keep making Ultralisks and Hydralisks, which, by the way, he is. Yeah, basically, Love UI is just like, hey, trade with my Spider Mines. They're basically free. I don't have an infinite number of them, but again, they're basically free, and they do a ton of damage, 125. But this is not acceptable. This picking them out of the ground with Hydralisks is just not how I envisioned this going, says Love UI. SCV transfer up to the third base. Look at this SCV fighting this Ultra. Zap, zap, he says. Zippity, zoppity. Throwing up supply depots to be a bit of a wall. Look at the Vultures trying to kill this Ultra. They do so little damage to it. They finally take it down with some additional tank support here, but it has 179 to 129 supply. Zerglings are cruising in. But too many siege tanks, not enough dropping on top of siege tanks or bases. Siki, I don't know if he doesn't feel like he can, if he feels like he's too under the gun, but he's not done any of the like, amazing drops we've seen him do against Terran players in the past. Especially on this map. We've seen games of Siki on this map where he's been dropping on top of tanks, dropping on production facilities, and just being everywhere the Terran player is not, especially if they're mecking. But today, he's just really content to come over the ground, which is exactly what the Terran player wants him to do. Love UI says, please continue A-moving in the direction of my tanks and my spider mines and my vultures. Because it really has been a complete transition into straight up mech here. I actually feel like Mutalix might be okay. Although there's so much Irradiate available here. Yeah, here we go. Coming over the ground. Killing a couple tanks, but largely... Yeah, the Ultras are all gone. Hydras are not the answer here. As three of them go down to one Spider Mine, 150 to 106 supply. So, I don't know. It's been evened up a little bit here. Siki was down bigger two minutes ago. He's made some decent trades since then. But yeah, Love UI, his entire attention seems to be centered around this particular section of the map. Overlords don't even have speed! 
let alone drop capability. This is not good for Sicky, man. He's trying to get rid of this Terran base at the 12 o'clock, but... No? It's not happening? Gosh. Oh, spider mine plus tank equals dead ultra every time. Every time. It is very basic math. spider man plus tank equals dead ultra list. These ultras have managed to get right on top of these siege tanks and wipe them out. So Siki getting a massive victory here. Have to unseize the tanks with some Goliath support. And they're going to get this guy too. Morlings cruising up. Sicky kind of doing some good stuff here. He does wipe out most of the defense at the 12 o'clock base. There's a Hydralisk and a Zergling picking off SCVs left and right. Is Sicky making a comeback in this game? I like that he's attacking this area because, again, Love UI didn't seem to have the ability to really pay attention to this as much as he should. That said, Siege Tanks are sieging up in range of the 6 o'clock base for Sicky. So maybe, and overall, it's not a super great trade. I don't know. Still, it's 132 to 104 supply. Love you, I. His lead keeps plummeting over and over right now. Siggy does not have a massive army. He just doesn't. But he's been able to take down Love you, I's army and replenish his at a fairly decent rate. But that 6 o'clock is gone. So base for base, eye for an eye in that situation. Morlings cruising up here. And the defensive tanks on the low ground here, I kind of love that. Maybe putting them behind the supply depots up there to protect the third would be good too. That's a huge spider mine hit. Look at all the dead zerglings. Oh, more spider mines. No. Ah, so smart to get that Ultralisk up on these tanks right as they siege. They didn't even have time to get a shot off on him before he closed distance, even with anabolic synthesis. He finally gets wiped out. 138 to 114's total supply. Okay, so let's see. For Love UI to win this game, he needs to kill this bottom right base or the top left base. If he does that, he wins. If he loses his third, he loses. Oh, he's got his fourth back already. What a boss. Guess what you need against Lings and Ultras? A lot of plus three siege tanks, it turns out. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's just making tanks, making vultures. The spider mines are worth their weight in gold right now against this ground army of Siki. The Ling Ultra stuff. Is he kind of given up on Plague and Dark Swarm and stuff? Maybe he has. We have seen games where Zerg players have gone for Dark Swarm. But once there are like 10 tanks clustered, it just doesn't matter. The splash damage is so great, the Dark Swarm almost doesn't exist. Oh, this base doesn't have a Nidus. Oh no! Oh! This is. That's like dealing with uh, Dragoons, man. Jumping on top of those Hiders, throwing down Spider Mines, and then the aftermath ensues. Yeah, I think Love UI could just wander down this direction and wipe out this base and win this game. It's very much within the realm of his ability here. But I don't know what moves is he making. Okay, so he is wandering in that general direction, which seems to be a good thing for Terran fans everywhere. Taking his time with it. He's very slow and steady wins the race style here. So there are two Ultras, one basically full HP, one at about 50% health. He's bringing in additional tanks, very slowly, steadily sieging up with his 200 APM, making tech switching into Goliaths a little bit. And here we go, Siki making his move. I, I mean, urgh. the defensive matrix on all of these tanks makes them so tanky, if you'll pardon the pun. Oh my gosh. All right, well, these Ultras all died, the Hiders all died. That felt like a final move out of Siki there. He was going for it. This Defiler is alive. Never mind, he's gone. Right side base under assault. The things are trying to jump on this, but nope. Three tanks covering each other pretty darn good. Love UI not pushing the advantage. Really good with Spider Mines, though. His advantage seems to be in some really, really nice Spider Man. Or Spider Man. Spider mine play. Again, killing this base is your key to victory right now because it'll leave Siki with one mining base against one mining base of the Terran, or two mining bases of the Terran, and the math does not add up. So here's our million Goliaths that we've made. The hold position in the Dark Swarm is nice. 
Plague ooh, on the Goliath and a Radiate on the Defiler as it retreats from this position. Yeah, I just, the numbers have never made sense for Siki this entire game. He never got to that point he needed to where he just had more stuff to handle this mech. And as a result, he's made some decent trades in some of these engagements, but he doesn't have enough to save the space. He doesn't even have a Nidus to, like, Nidus in a Defiler, throw up a Dark Swarm and try to do this. He has to come from this direction, which is being covered pretty well, but it turns out... But yeah, Love UI focusing on this makes all the sense in the entire world. This is the key to victory. Left side, million Zerglings coming in, friends. Goliath standing in, protecting the tanks. More defensive matrix. That's it for everything Zerg on the ground over here. Nope, not happening. Not happening for Siki. Yeah, whoever this Love UI guy is, he's, you know, he's slow, steady, plodding, but his mech is pretty good. Good enough to take down Siki, one of the better Zerg players, one of the better Zerg foreigners. This irradiates the def Oh, there was a Defiler over here. Does it throw up a Dark Swarm? Obviously. Look at Love UI taking the 6 o'clock. He's like, you know what I'm going to do? Style. Style on you, friend. And all Sicky Duke can do is throw in groups of Lings and some Hydras into the mix. They don't even have detection for these Spider Mines. They're maybe going to get this Engineering Bay, which is kind of cool, I guess. A minor victory, but... Oh, Ultra popping out of that egg at just the right time to save this bottom right base, but several drones go down anyway. Like, do we need to irradiate or defensive matrix anybody? No, you're good. Fantastic. Never mind. I'm not going to use my spells unnecessarily, and that's it, man. It's 146 to 70 supply. This base is toast. The drones are gone. He keeps trying to wander over this direction, but plus three tanks, yo. And that's a good game. Sicky is out in 31 minutes and 51 seconds. Love UI gets the win in a very, very impressive way. I'm, I'm just, I'm really impressed by this. He opened mech, opened Goliaths to handle the Mutalisks. Did that very well. Sicky just tried to expand, tried to out expand Love UI, but he took his third base, moved out. Secured a fourth base, and from there it was all downhill for Siki. Lots of greater radiate, lots of great defensive matrix, a lot of spider mines, good upgrades. Getting that plus three as fast as terribly possible, and then it's wiping out the six o'clock, wiping out the bottom right base, and that's it. That is the key to victory. He did temporarily lose his twelve o'clock, but was able to reestablish that fairly easily. And yeah, Siki, no drops, man. I don't again. I don't think he had Overlord speed in this game, which. Throws me. Like, I know it's him. That's his tag. But this is not what I expected from Siki. And as a result... As a result, that's it. Love UI gets the win. So, 31 minutes and 51 seconds end of the day. 215,000 points for Siki. 256 for Love UI. The produced here is too close for the killed. Right? Like, it's only 200 more units produced for Siki. But Love UI killed 600 units... And Siki only killed 240. I mean, that is a shellacking in every sense of the word. Turned up raising and blah, blah, blah. Zerg's involved there. Gas mined. Siki way more, way more minerals. And outspent the Terran player by a full... Man, is that... Do maths. You got this, Falcon. Come on. That's 20... 16, 16,000 resources? I think that's accurate. Please check my math on that one. Man. <laughs> Zerg players. Maybe not having a good, very week. Not a very good week here. Yeah, but I mean, Protoss and Terran, fairly happy about the recent results. So great job at the end of the day by Love UI. I wish I knew who this was. If you know who it is, please tell me and I can update the title if it's some kind of a Smurf name, but... As for now, that's going to be it for me. I don't really know what else to say about this game. It was just a fantastic display of mech, opening mech, and finishing with mech from Love UI. So that's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. 
And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. <laughs>